Hello guys, today let's start with Rowoon and Joe Bo's romantic Korean drama named Destin with you. Episode 1 of Destin with you starts with a government servant named Lee Hong Joe visiting a construction site to check out a noise complaint from the nearby residents. She tells the residents that she won't be able to stop the construction as the decibels of noise recorded are under the permissible limit. The residents get angry at Hong Jo and start yelling at her. At the same time, a construction worker falls from the building and ends up losing his life when a rebar lodges into his skull. The episode then moves on to Jang Sin Yu who is the lawyer on the case regarding the construction worker's death. He is suffering from a disease that makes his heart run really slow while he hallucinates a bloody hand called Red Hand on his face. Sin Yu asks the hand to spare him as the air runs chilly but his conversation with the mystical creature is halted when his colleague, Kim Wook, shows up. Wook asks Sin Yu to prepare well for the hearing the following morning. At the hearing of the case, Sin Yu manages to prove that the construction worker had staged the accident in order to receive huge compensation from his client. He calls in the worker's wife and proves that the woman had asked her husband to stage an accident to get some funds for their son's cancer treatment. Sin Yu argues that the accident was executed poorly and the man ended up losing his life. The woman eventually comes clean and Sin Yu's client ends up winning the case. In celebration, the client asks Sin Yu and his colleagues to join him for drinks at a club. The man starts getting physical with one of the female employees and beats up a male employee who tries to defend her. Sinyu shows up at the scene and saves the man by warning the client about the CCTV cameras in the room. Meanwhile, a young vlogger meets with an accident after he visits an abandoned shrine late at night. The vlogger ends up tripping and falling after entering the shrine. Hangzhou is transferred to a different to a different department where her new senior, Gong Seogu does not treat her well. Since Hangzhou's interference had cost Seogu his promotion, he tried to take it out on her by hazing her at work. Hangzhou also has a one-sided crush on Kuan Yi Kaiyang, someone who also works at the city hall. After the vlogger's parents create a scene at the office, Hangzhou volunteers to go check the haunted shrine out. She promises to get it demolished as per the victim's parents' request. Her colleague, S.A.E. Byol, accompanies Hangzhou on the drive to the haunted shrine but asks her to go by herself to inspect it. Hangzhou takes photos of the shrine to report to the demolishers but spots Sinyu who is also there. She ends up fainting out of shock as she falls to the ground. Hangjo assumes Sin Yu to be the Grim Reaper but is shocked when he snaps a photo of her instead. Hangzhou passes out and wakes up to S.A.E. Byul yelling at her for making her come to the haunted house. Meanwhile, Sin Yu visits a family member's funeral where his father scolds him for letting their family shrine go into ruins. Sin Yu tells the man that he had put his friend to work on the restoration of the shrine and had also paid a huge fortune in advance for the restoration. He claims that he had visited the shrine for the first time that day and learnt that the restoration of the shrine had not even started. His father mocks him for not taking good care of their family shrine while his grandfather asks Sin Yu to pour him a drink. Sin Yu's hand starts shivering while pouring a drink down the old man's glass. Sin Yu cooks up a lie to cover his trembling hands and leaves after a while. He goes to a neurologist who tells Sinyu that he has severe brain damage. Sinyu learns that the condition he is suffering from is untreatable and genetic. He also finds out that due to this illness, the right side of his body including his dominant hand, would stop responding and his speech would get slurred. Meanwhile, Hangzhou goes back to the office and learns that the shrine is not owned by the government but by a private business person. Her boss tells Hangzhou to ask around and find more information about the shrine as there was nothing listed about them in the government records. Seogu also threatens Hangzhou, stating she could lose her job if she does not convince the owners to go through with the demolition. Hangzhou starts asking the elderly in the area and learns that the shrine is owned by a family of construction workers, and the newest owner is a lawyer named Sin Yu at Law and High Law Firm. She goes to pay Sin Yu a visit and recognizes him in the elevator. Both Hangzhou and Sin Yu have an odd first interaction when she accuses him of leaving her to die in the middle of the haunted shrine. She tries to reason with him, asking him to demolish it but he refuses to do so. Sin Yu claims that the vlogger had trespassed on his private property, adding that his death doesn't concern him or his family. Hangzhou leaves Sin Yu's office dejected and spots Yi Kaiyang on her way back to the city hall. Yi Kaiyang is assisting an architect who was on his way to the civil office. The protesters against an upcoming project try to throw water on Yi Kaiyang but Hangzhou saves him by getting doused in the water instead of him. After going back to her office, Hang Zhou's boss yells at her for not going through with her promise of getting the haunted shrine demolished. Meanwhile, Sin Yu is on a date with his girlfriend, Yu Na Yeon. Na Yeon complains that Sin Yu doesn't spend enough time with her over the past few weeks. Sin Yu tries to reason with her and apologizes for being too busy with work. He avoids discussing his medical condition with her and goes through with the rest of the date. At the same time, Hang Zhou recalls the elders from the village talking about a senior shaman who used to live in the shrine. She decides to talk to Sin Yu and find out more about the shaman who was at a nursing home. On her way back home, she runs into Yi Kaiyang on the elevator and starts blushing. He claims that he was worried about her safety after she showed up in front of a protester. Yi Kaiyang states that the protester could have had acid in his hand instead of water and claims that she should be mindful going forward. 
They chat for a bit before Yi Kaiyang leaves to go home on his own and Hong Zhou watches him leave. The next morning, Hong Zhou shows up at Sin Yu's office and the two start bickering instantly. Hong Zhou asks Sin Yu to tell her where the shaman is, insisting to talk to the woman but Sin Yu refuses. Hong Zhou reveals that her colleagues were trying to outcast her and adds that she did not want to be eating alone at work too because she was tired of eating alone at home. Sin Yu is touched by Hong Zhou's story and gives her the number of the Ministry of Labor to complain about her workplace harassment. He also gives her the name of the nursing home so she to talk to the shaman. Hong Zhou visits the shaman and calls Shin Ju, telling him that shaman Yun Wall has agreed to demolish the shrine. She sends Shin Ju a video of the shaman giving her permission to Hong Zhou to have the shrine taken down. Shin Ju shows up to see the shaman himself and asks the old woman what she is doing by allowing Hong Zhou to demolish the temple. Shaman Yun Wall claims that Shin Ju killed the woman with the red hand in his past life and was going to bear the consequences of his actions. She adds that Hong Zhou was the owner of the chest that held the power to break his curse. The next day, Hong Zhou joins Shin Ju and his family as they go through through a spiritual custom before demolishing the shrine. Later that night, Hong Zhou learns that her colleagues are out having dinner without her and feels sad. While demolishing the shrine, Shin Ju finds the chest and recalls how Shaman Yun Wall told him that Hong Zhou had a key to it. He finds Hong Zhou crying outside City Hall and asks her to tag along with him.